Mark Backler is on. What is it, guys? That's an Apple Pie. They already got an iPhone 5. Good thing it's got the tape. Wow. That was tested. Yeah, it's I think we can 
skip the <laughs> basic features yeah. of just how a box syncs back to your computer and spend perhaps a little bit of time playing around with the more like kind of fancy ancillary type features, uh, which makes it more than just a shared drive. Somebody sends you a link <coughs> and you log in. Is there a way to make that folder sync? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. On your computer? From your computer order, I've got a so level three question. Up there. Level three. Level Put the one. little down arrow. One level one. It's not there. It's not there for that one. Usually you have to, so if you're going to have a folder sync, you have to do it from the original, from the start path. You can't, so I can't have a subfolder of a folder sync unless I create it. Mm. I've never tried to do that. No, because we have subfolders and folders that we think. But are they shared or did you create them? Oh, I didn't create them. But they're shared to you. They are shared. So the shared ones you can't. I can't do it through a shared one. Oh, you're saying through a link folder? If you get a, if you get a link sent to you, <laughs> right. it comes up and shows up in your list of folders, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just a link to that box. Right. It's a subfolder of a, of a larger tree. So that one you can't set up to sync. Um, the reason being, there is a good reason for it. So our, our group, the ITFEs, have, have images that we put on all your computers, right, that we use to build and create and hand you a new laptop. Somebody, the, the person that's in charge of that created, spent an entire night creating his images and did 24 hours worth of work over two days and, and uploaded up to Box. And my computer was set to sync that folder to it. And all of a sudden, the office sucks, the internet's going down, and we figure out that my computer's pulling all this stuff because it's set to automatically sync. And we turn it off. I stop the sync. And then those files, those eight files that he did, disappeared. So from the, your machine or his? From Box. From oh, shit. Yeah, they were deleted from Box because my computer stopped syncing them. And then when it talked to it again, it thought that it deleted them. So Box deleted them, right? Because the sync goes back and forth. So the guy calls me because it's labeled. It says Mike deleted this folder last, or Mike did. <laughs> and he's like, "What the? F did you do, Mike?" And I'm like, "I didn't do anything, man." So what we did was we created the subfolder. So I now all of our all of my role is attached to that images folder, but we can't sync it because it's a subfolder of another that we're not sharing. We're only sharing that one subfolder from John, who's in charge of images. I think you might want to So I think you, yeah, you have a graphic to describe all this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not so right off. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 So so this one. is my this is this is our, our job folder, right? So I wanna I wanna sync this whole folder because I'm part of my new job. I wanna sync this to my computer so I don't have to deal with logging in to box.com on a, on the internet browser every time I want to work with a folder. I wanna have it on my computer ready to go for me, right? That's a great idea. So I come here but and I say you sync. don't sync back the box if you're working on your Yes it does. It does. So if I when I when I open a file in that sync folder and I, I do my editing or I do my markups or whatever it is, I save the file, it saves back to the same folder and box sync says, Hey, I noticed a difference. And it okay. and it mimics it on the web portal. Oh. Yeah. So it is real-time live syncing. That's why when my computer synced those and then I deleted those files, it, it saw that I deleted them and it deleted them off a box. And then I got a call like, what the, did you do that for? Yeah, so these three, you have the online version of box and then the synced version and they're mirror images of each other. Okay. Also right. on here, there's a small little blue check mark, which mm -hmm. means, hey, it's good, it's up to date, it's synced. Mm -hmm. If what someone else changes the file, this will change to, I think, like a red. So what I'll do now is I'll get orange, orange. Orange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if I change a file in there, it will also go to that little orange, hey, we're working on syncing, so other people might not see it yet. There's also ways to, and we'll get into it a little later on in the conversation, to lock both our files so that way if you're editing an RFI and, and Greg wants to go open it, box will say this is locked and someone's in, just like our shared drives do now, if you're working on a folder and somebody in your job site goes to work on the same folder, it'll say person X is dealing with this 
when like they're done, you can copy. have it. Or you get a read-only copy that you just can't do anything. <laughs> but you'll also notice that on box, these these folders don't have the little thinking, because these folders aren't technically the ones in charge of thinking to the desktop. Right? The only folder that Marshall has in charge of thinking to the desktop is the main uh, sample box sample box folder with a little blue. They use the box. The blue. Mm -hmm. And he can disable it or enable it. But you have to start at the top of the tree in order to sync folder. So yeah. shared shared link. So I think it's important that people know that you don't think you, you're not going into here every time you go to the folders that are on your desktop. So it's not and if people yeah, don't use it, it's not, you're not going here and uploading files every time and trying to get in these folders, it's actually all on your desktop. Yeah, you have the, you have the option of whichever place yeah. you want. Yeah, which is easier on your Yeah, desktop. the only thing you need to go in here is you originally have to tell it to sync it to yeah. local. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, you never need to go back in there. Correct. Or if you want to send a link mm -hmm. to somebody, somebody else. Actually, you I can think you can link that local. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can, you can send a hyperlink? Yeah, uh -huh. you can right click on the file and there's a, it's either a box, extra box window, or it says send the link. If you're on a job site box and you've got two people that are working Get out there, link. the folder's on their oh. desktop, mm -hmm. same folder, same oh, yeah. document, whoever completes theirs first will think, the next one will probably think afterwards, and the, if they're not containing the same information, you just wiped out the person's no. information. No. On a shared drive, you would. On box, it versions it. So, okay, version one, version two. yeah, you'll see on box, if you go into the a folder with multiple files, if I worked on CSI Master Format 2004 and then Marshall worked on it and we saved them at the same time, you'd see in that folder, it would actually sync for both of us another version that said version two, mine, whoever saved last would be version two, and then the original. You have to be cognizant of that and look at the title and see if... Or you can lock your files, you can lock your files while you're using them. Mm -hmm. or, or you can always go back and it will show you all the previous ones as well. You can pull the older version. Yeah, you can pull the older version, you can... Right, all I'm saying is that a person could assume that theirs is the latest and greatest, but yeah. it's not. Well, yeah. since there's only two people on the job, could you just... Person. <laughs> 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 hey, don't make fun of small projects. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's only one person you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You really have to get mad at yourself. That also brings up the point of they're usually. I try to make a comment for the greater good. Well, it comes to a greater point because you'll want to have one person on your job team. You know, the bigger it gets, probably two or three people, depending on the size. But you want to have people that are directly in charge of that. So that way, you know, every other night or every night when I go to look at Box and make sure everything's okie dokie, I'm I'm seeing version three and four from JT's freaking PDF, and I I can make the phone call. I can I can fix it in a few hours as opposed to letting it go for days and days, and then 12 versions later, I'm like, why the hell are there 12 versions of this file? And then having to go back. So that's why you kind of appoint that head person to say you're going to be the one that deals with the file structure on our job. Enjoy. <laughs> so while you were talking, Mike, I went and created, created essentially the same file that said that it was different, uploaded it, used the same file name so they don't have to have all these redundant file names that say Rev1, Rev2, Marshall Andrews markup, Marshall Andrews plus architect markup. You can keep the same file name intact, choose to upload a new version, it'll upload a new version, we can see at the master structure it says version 2, so it has been updated, and uh, going into the properties you can see uh, the history of it, when the first one was in there, and when the uh, new one went in there, and who did it as well. And so kind of for, for workflows, you know, you can use it for RFIs, you can see it work through and down the line. Uh, drawing revisions, submittals, uh, meeting minutes, any kind of where you have the same document that mm -hmm. updates and relives itself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're submitting a, a list of documents into a folder and some period of time later you get revised drawing with the same title on it, same name, you can go ahead and dump it in there and it'll save it as the version two. Mm -hmm. No, it won't.
won't no, go. It won't stay over the first line. It'll be copied. You can delete it, though. Right? Yeah. Right. You can delete the first version. Why yeah. Prove that? Yeah. But, it, I mean, you, you have a terabyte well, of information, so delete. you might as well just you leave the back. old file on there for, yeah. Unless you really do run, start running out of in, uh, file space, but I don't see that happening. Everybody has a terabyte. Everyone yeah. has a terabyte. I actually have a thousand terabytes. Holy crap. <laughs> really? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that like, isn't that beyond <laughs> that? Isn't that beyond that? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's only 909 yeah. terabytes, but it's no, still a terabyte. Come on. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Lower than I think you should get Half a petabyte is a jackabyte. Uh, also, kind of related to file versioning, you do have the ability to add comments. Uh, and I remember how to add comments. Hey, uh, so the other, this is different than you don't have to do it. You just have to put it on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all of this you can do on your iPad. I'm going to go over. Okay, but this is we're talking fairly right now on your computer. Yeah, everybody has an account. So talking about comments, this makes so we've all had email strings screens long of document comments and drawing markup comments and all this thing. This puts it real time in a in a sort of Facebook chat way of dealing with document comments. So if there's a if there's a drawing or a, a set of drawings that I'm gonna be looking at and editing and changing all the time, you and the and the people collaborating with you on that document will have the ability, much like you would add a comment to Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those social type networks. This is the same, it's literally the same way. You, you click on comment, you can even like the dumb thing. <laughs> Silly. Really? You can assign tasks. You can assign tasks in box. So if, if you're next in line to make your update or your markup, you assign it to that collaborator of that file. Can you yell at people on it? You could put all caps. Yeah, just type in caps. Type in caps. Can I post any emotions? <laughs> yeah, you can do smiley faces and things like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, Modicon. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling today? <laughs> you like a level three question to that. <laughs> yeah. really? that hey, a lot of people use smiley faces around here. No. Um, <laughs> functionality of comments is pretty easy. Any any folder can be commented on. Any <laughs> file can be commented on. Um, actually shared or not. If I have my own personal folders, I can make little comments on what's hiding in them so I don't actually have to click through the tree even though I should probably know what's in my own folders. But, you know. You so do have a thousand terabytes. I do. Can you, can you go through <laughs> how to share with access rights to a person? Yeah. So just so everybody's on the same page with like, hey, now that we have this file, we need to communicate it out. So let's do it for, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, like, commission folder, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Although this actually may, well, it'll still work. So if you go to our little drop down and go to collaborator, collaborator, cool, and it'll bring a list of who has access to this folder. And if you need to, if you need someone to have access to this folder, you can uh, click on invite collaborators, type their name in, uh, type a short message, hey, this is why you're getting an email, this is what this folder is. Uh, come on in and check it out. Uh, For names. All of DPR people, just like your Outlook emails, will come up. So if you start typing in Mike Elmore and you get to Mike and then a space, it'll come up with all the mics in DPR. Right now it only works for anybody with an at dpr.com address. So it's a little okay. easier. Search and draw. Then when you're sending it to them, uh, you can choose what permission level or what kind of user group they are uh, from these predefined user groups, which we cannot edit. Uh, and I actually do have a little spreadsheet that shows uh, what each level does. And so it's kind of like top, top down for like super user to you've got no rights at all. So owner is the guy who just creates the folder and co-owner has all the same rights but they just weren't there first. Well they can't delete the owner. And I guess they can't delete the owner. <laughs> you can't un, you can't un, take away the owner from the folder. So. Yeah. 
Can you transfer ownership? <coughs> Box can. You'd have to get yep, back and you'd have to ask them. Yeah. So ask you to ask them? Mm -hmm. I'll that, yeah. So there's no issues with that? As far as? As far as I broke age in my folder. <laughs> Even if no. there's no DPR behind it. I can access box at any point, right? Because it's my box. If you leave the company, we take your access away. Boom. Oh. So there that's one of the things that happens okay. when... I know we talked about that before yeah. and you weren't sure if you could do that or not. So. Yeah. So whenever whenever a user is... is whenever a user you leaves take DPR, away, we Even take if you're the... Yeah, oh, it's no. just like that person can no longer log into their computer or join the Wi-Fi at our job site. They're removed from the system, and that includes the so subject line is shut down network access now. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually pretty <laughs> big capital. They're yelling at us too. Big capital letters. This is your we talked about terminated. We were talking about <laughs> when we talked about this originally. We talked about security, yeah. and that was one of the issues. Was what happens oh, if the owner decides they're doing something different in life and Right. Do they still? Well, yeah. What have if you have shenanigans in no? some Joe Schmo that might know that something like that's about to happen to him, and he goes in and erases your entire? Because he's an editor, he just takes the entire folder structure and deletes it. A, you're going to be gone a little quicker, and B, <laughs> Box will <laughs> Box can reinstate that folder structure on our phone call. Um, we had an issue with Christina Parker where she was doing a bid, oh, yeah. and the link got messed up and the folder actually, the whole folder got deleted. With, with not just that file she was trying to link, but the whole folder. We got Box on the horn in under three minutes and they, their user guide, he just put it right back in the folder just like it was. We created the same link and it was done. So they have a backup on there? Yeah. In, in our region they have three data centers. Um, one, in, one in the city, one up north and one in the south and then they have them spread out through all, all areas. And that kind of spread, I mean, it's no different than someone who has access to your shared drive and no different than someone who has access to your file cabinet to pull the paper files and toss them in the dumpster as well. You can also put time limits on how long people have access to the files that you share, too. Yeah. You can put on limits on the help. link. Yeah. yeah. If you've invited them as collaborators and they're collaborators, the link disabling means that the link I've sent you an Outlook to click on this, mm -hmm. if you forward it to 20 other people, too, on April 25th, it's going to turn off. That means that you're going to click that link and it's going to go to the box page and say, sorry, you can't do that. Yeah, find out. <laughs> you can extend those link times as well. Efficiently printing documents from box. Mm -hmm. Let me show me how to do that. So you open up the file, it has several drawings in it. They're individual print. drawings. This is a very good... I shouldn't be printing, right? Oh, you should be printing. printing. This is a very <laughs> good... <laughs> uh, Right. Paper take the printers away. Paperless yeah. company. Um, <laughs> the we both yeah. 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 There's a there, it's more efficient to do on your iPad actually than it is on the computer. Yeah. On the computer, yeah. you can do file yeah. print, I think, right? Yeah. Or just do. Yeah. I mean, you can you can only do quick print from. Uh, <laughs> I think that's from your computer. <laughs> but if you if you don't have it, it's print. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have it, it's print. Uh, if you don't have it, it's print. I don't know. You can actually print from box. I can't print it. No, you can't print really. You imagine the nonsense that would happen if you just printed the time. <coughs> you should be able to click the drop down box. And course, print. Are you saying instead of having a like under documents, you're yeah. having all your yeah. files yeah. and every, every single thing in box now? Yeah. 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 Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. a huge shared drive. Do you want to move everything? Like from the, are you saying like from the On my computer I've got CDs and my documents and all that. Hey, I'm yeah. And then I take the handful of things I'm working on now and turn them on box. I mean, I would, no. I would just keep all you'll the have, projects have options up then. on box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, pretty much uh, everything that you're working on for like after right, projects, right, right, you have to keep on box. And then you, you, you can hide it from your team members <laughs> or you can share it with them. <laughs> so, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you can, Why, you from, the, the, from the preview, you can hit print. And I mean, you'll, you'll, Still your computer. And then it brings up the window of your hard drive. Uh, so you'll have access yeah. to so whatever. That's one page of. So you'll be able to access it. No, it does the whole document. You'll be able to access it. Or you would have individual. Someone else's computer. If you're somewhere and you didn't bring you your laptop, you can subscribe to the page log in online. You can do it. I think you can have your documents in there. Well, no, I mean there's. So you have your different disciplines. you got architectural drawings, civil drawings. So architecturals. 
is one file in there that oh, has the 50 pages. Unless you do it on And then there's another. On the computer, right, yeah. It's more than it's on the computer. So if you're yeah. trying to print out a whole thing, you put in the folder, you share it with the people that. Just look like those. Well, I guess it's more the individual file. Because, like, for instance, all the boxes are just all available. I have a job that'll have. 12 drawings on it. Yeah. You need to go to a job block. I need to have, I have mine on my iPad, but I need a set, 11 by 17, just there so people can flip through and go, okay, yeah. But to print that, instead of me taking them, downloading them to my C drive, S drive, and then printing them from there, I was trying to print them from here, and it just took a long time. Can you print the whole folder? Drag a new folder right here. Or just the thinking part of Because the folder has had 12 different drawings in it, single drawings. Well, it has to pull all, it has to effectively download those files to be printed, and then hand it off to your local print driver, and then it prints. Sorry. And yeah. it'll be the only one. Sure, we're we're no, I thought, sure I thought that thought people, so all other conversations. Yeah. It's just white and white on the camera. Right now. Box, so box, so you need to manage the menu. <laughs> no, it's got to be in the <laughs> my box. So, 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 so all my new pockets. So, I know I digress. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's what I thought it was. I don't know. It's not as sufficient. So, to kind of kind of keep everybody on the same page, we've got a few side conversations going on. I don't know, Jim. It wasn't that wasn't that important. All right, we'll just keep going. So we uh, talked about printing with. Where do you go? Bobin? Right here. Yeah, there you go. Um, you can bring the beer up. Efficiently is kind of a stretch of a word because it, it literally has to download all those files. So if I want to print a whole architectural drawing set before I run out, remember that it's still, it's still, it still has to go over the network and pull those drawings, effectively downloading them onto your computer to be shared with the print driver to go to the printer. So don't print. No, no. No, no. Just, no drawing set. just remember that it's going to take 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how long the drawing set is, or five to ten minutes, depending on how big the drawing set is. So, printing a page is pretty easy. You get to here, you get to the yeah. to the preview, click the page, or printing the one page you want. It's done in a few seconds. Um, you can also air print box files from your iPad here. So you log into the box application on your iPad, which I'll show you in a little bit and you can tell it to print to any of our printers here in the office and soon to be at most job sites with the ability to air print. We're working on that as a group to figure out how to resolve that. What is air printing? Uh, if I want to print, uh, yeah, if I want to air printing, it's a little different than wireless because technically you can be on a Wi-Fi and print wireless. Air printing is from an iPad to a to a Canon or For those of the printing production. <laughs> 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 but it's not wired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have my box saved here, and I'm, I have the same saved under your favorite. So you drag and drop. But if you said create like an Excel or a Word file from scratch and you just do the file and save that, can you navigate to that folder locally? Like Actually, you can do it from the office. Do you have the yeah. office? Uh, the no, box, has, box has so three apps that I want to tell you about. Box Edit. Box for Office and Box for Outlook. Um, Marshall's going to show us Box for Office, which installs an add-in to Excel, PowerPoint, Word, um, and Publisher. All the basically all of them except for OneNote and Outlook. So for us to directly answer your question, here we are in Excel, and then did a file save as uh, Box automatically integrates into your favorites. And so instead of uh, you know normally clicking on your C drive yeah. or wherever else your shared drive might be, you would just go up to your favorites folder in the My Box files, and then it brings you to the parent box folder. And wherever you save it here will then sync up yeah. accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. and Sometimes that you can come up there. The the other path is that it's like your your username. Uh, so under this one, you select you know Russ Legrow. And then uh, your my box files will show up that way as well. The favorites do not show up. Oh. Do you have box for office installed? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. 
that's the like really long way. Build on what? To do it. Your computer? Is he asking? Yeah. 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 The box for office, all it does is basically if you have a file that you're working on that's in Word, you can push it to box. Mm. Instead of saving it to your hard drive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a live file that you know you can work off of. It's a shortcut that you save. Yeah. Like I, I do that with some of the other guys that we comment on the same document. download from box.com and you you can quite literally from whatever I'm working on here I can open a folder I can open a file based on my box login which for some reason is not being logged up. What it's not working? Me, instead, of going, <laughs> instead of logging on to the website or going into my sync my box sync like if I have a folder for example that I can't sync right because it's a subfolder this will get it to me easier than me bringing up an Internet Explorer, logging into Box, and then searching through Box. This, I'm already logged into Box, usually. I thought you just clicked on over there where all the shared drive stuff is and you got it. You can do it that way. Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. what Marshall was It's sounding like the easiest way, too. <laughs> yeah, like right there. <laughs> Why don't you just click yeah. right there and go? But if I can't, <laughs> if I can't think a subfolder that I'm, that I'm a collaborator on, Right, like I'm not allowed to sync my images folder anymore because they get synced to all the offices and then they get deleted. So I don't have access to that folder for sync for Windows Sync. It can't. I'm not going to say sync again. So I can't get it this way. <laughs> right? I have to get it another way, which usually means logging onto the internet, logging in the box, and then finding the folder. This way, I'm already logged in the box. I go into open a box file, find the file, open it in whatever Office Word or Excel or mm. PowerPoint I and want. And does it only show if you're in Excel, the Excel ones? Yeah. It shows all of them. So through Excel you can have uh, <laughs> Word. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, <laughs> probably not going to be there. Yeah. Dan, do you know when the word is level 4 stuff? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Stick with that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coastal uses it. <laughs> 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 I think the You're still on your purple belt. Yeah, right, right. So Outlook for Box is actually kind of nice because if I'm trying to send an attachment that's more than five gigabytes to anybody other than DPR or Google, it's not gonna they're not gonna receive it. DPR has a twenty five megabyte limit on files being sent over email. Um, Google has a twenty five or fifty, so beyond those two companies, you're kind of stuck. Most people have a five megabyte limit. <laughs> um, in that five megabyte limit, you can do a, most single page PDFs, even some bigger ones, but when you start getting into drawing sets and other things like that, obviously you run into a problem. So if you want to send an attachment bigger than that, you write your normal email, you attach the file just like you would, and Box will come up with a link that says, hey, do you want to send this attachment via Box? And you say yes, and it send a link to the file inbox that you're attaching and they can download it just like a, a program like send file or something like that. There's third party programs that do it. It's not password. It's just, it gets linked it's just a email. link to an attachment just like an email would. Um, so instead of having to deal with how am I going to get this file to them, you do it. Outlook, Outlook and Box do the work for you without you having to do or put it to Box and create the link. Or just yeah. Just um, so box for, box for Outlook is actually maybe more functionally usable than Box for Office. And then Box Edit, which I'd consider a third level type thing. Hey, did you discuss about security of the link when it sends from Outlook? It's just, yeah. yeah, it's just an attachment. So you, anybody, if he forwards the attachment, then it'll still work. 
So it's just like an email attachment. It just so can do bigger they ones. Get the whole that they can, yes. And it, it's always a default setting that on your box account, right? Because the default setting on DPR collaborators only. So if you don't have an at DPR account, I mean at DPR email address, then <coughs> you don't have. I'm not saving the file to box, so it doesn't it doesn't secure it like that. It's just it's just me. It's just a service used to store a larger file than 25 megabytes. So if you navigate it, you wouldn't see that file anywhere. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, I Unless you've got my email and you clicked on the box <coughs> attachment and you downloaded it from the website, you wouldn't. So it's like a you send it file. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> and this is like zoom out a little bit. Other than the video recording we're doing now. Mm -hmm. yeah. What other training <coughs> is going to be in Sacramento about this? Yeah. I I have a oh, right now training for box in my role is is very limited and I'm the only one that's ever put one on in a regional office so far. Okay. I'll be doing another one in uh, <coughs> in uh, August. So when, 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 when you give that doing? content, yeah. like graphics that ex pictorially explain mm -hmm. all of the stuff we're talking about. I had it. Yeah, that would be huge. Okay. Speak to yeah, because like if we're talking about baseline skill set and using our files on our job site yeah. and how we share those files yeah. and the security and rights are associated, that that's got to be kind of like a handbook for us, like the PE especially. Yeah, I mean, we were joking about Gary earlier, but God, talk about liability. Like we need we need we some, some like some little go to like graphic today. So <laughs> just do this. Yeah, one of the things that I will teach you how to do a time sheet, but this is on you, yeah. Mike. <laughs> and actually, and don't send that out do with it. a box <laughs> line. <laughs> that just, I have it. I have them. Um, two of the two of the walkthroughs I have actually are from box. I've gotten box training to actually say, hey, I need you to give me walkthroughs for these things for myself. Okay. And they're two. Yeah, like they're done. They're backsided. It's a backsided page, so it's one piece of paper I hand everybody, and it has a, uh, a very umbrella type overview. Right. Uh, security, how I collaborate, what I click on to collaborate, what it means if I make the collaborator an editor, viewer, viewer uploader, whatever, and then goes into some second level stuff, um, folder creations and syncing, and some of the apps that we use. Mm -hmm. um, my training goes into um, Box Sync for Windows and for Mac, Box for Office, Box for Outlook, and it goes into Box Edit a lot deeper and locking files and things like that. Cool. So also what, what we can do if we start having, uh, you know, kind of like a standard folder structure or hey, you got a new job site. Boom, I and Michael download, you know, kind of a template folder for you to start building from. We can have documents already stored in that template uh, job folder for people to start up. Uh, and so what we're looking at is the idea was rolled out to us from what San Francisco SSG is doing, because uh, particularly by the nature of SSG, you need to be started up yesterday. You don't have time to kind of collaborate and think, hey, how do we want to do this? Let's just copy and paste, get going. So part of what they have in there is all those kind of box training files and cheat sheets and MP4 videos so that not only do they set it out with the folder structure already set up, but they also have some standard documents in there for the team to access as well uh, for reference. And then and so they have it right here and they already have some content created as well which we can then just copy and use and roll out too. And then thinking the next step down, well, if we can preload content for how do we use Box, you know, why not preload content for the same stuff that we use on all projects of, say, safety with all of our uh, EHSP and different safety forms uh, that you need to download and have and make sure they accept the, uh, the latest version. Why not have that already there and rolled out to the team? They don't even have to think about it. You, know, you could do the same thing with sustainability or lean or uh, any one of the number of initiatives that DPR has that we can start getting things like this to quickly rolled out and rolled out easily to everyone. Uh, how will uh, is this going to take over on CMIC as a storage as opposed to uh, you know uploading?
uploading documents and sharing using the CMIC collaboration it, website? It would so be our awesome. Five submittals, you post it here and you share it that way? It would be awesome if CMIC was able to sync to Box. Uh, Box is able to integrate with some programs like that. And that idea has been brought up with uh, the innovation team at the talk at the top who's talking in Box. Uh, so you know, it'll probably never happen. But there are some project teams who, like, their their workflow for submittals is that they only send out the Box link to the submittal, yeah. and they'll do like a CMIC transmittal. Yeah. And in that CMIC transmittal, they'll have the hyperlink there. Yeah. The hyperlink lives in the CMIC architecture. Uh, however, since you only have a terabyte, well, that's a lot of information now. Ten years from now, you're probably going to end up deleting those folders, and so it won't be archived as much as it would be on CMIC. So, uh, my own point of view that you're going to have to be a little bit redundant. The CMIC is better for archiving because we can always go back there and anyone can always go back to there and it will live there. Uh, however, Box gives us some more functionality so maybe worth that double effort. Uh, for archiving the entire Box folder, uh, which was a concern of mine, of, okay we've got everything up on here, project's done, I want to get this off my Box account, off my hard drive, I need to move on to the next project, I've got too much memory and all that, how do we easily do that without going to each one and downloading it? all of it, part of our enterprise account will allow us to call Box up and say, hey, download this, this folder to a CD or a hard drive, and they'll do it on the back end and then ship it back to us, which we can then upload to Sacramento Share Drive or whatever archiving service that we might have down the road. Dan, <coughs> we got an um, interview Wednesday with AOC for Yuba City Courthouse. One of the questions in there is about project controls. You guys might yeah. do good spending two minutes talking about box CMIC archiving piece and, and just kind of get some talking points through that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. at any point we can send, like I said, they have a facility here in Sacramento, they have up north and down south in the region, and at any point I can send a drive to them and say, I need you to put this up in person X's account or I need this information, put it on the drive and send it to me. Um, we have that level of agreement for risk management's sake, and we have it for uh, shared drive losses and things like that. So, so these box data centers, they've got actual people answering the phone? <laughs> Not in that real <laughs> <laughs> It is? <laughs> but it, they, have a, they have a call center. Um, I don't know that you're actually talking to a guy from Sacramento necessarily, yeah. um, okay. but they do have, they have people working their data center all the time. Box, uh, they do claim a 99.9% uh, uptime availability. Yeah. Uh, nice. All of their data centers are built to uh, at least N plus one, and they do have multiple data centers. They don't say too much more detail than that, but <laughs> the 99.9% uptime availability is uh, nice to know. So I think they're mirrored like three times. Yeah. yeah. We have these three data centers that are exactly the same as those. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it's project wise then. Mm -hmm. Jeff, yeah. yeah. don't leave now. I think pro project wise, <laughs> uh, it serves a good purpose when you're talking really large files. And so if you're talking VIM coordination, uh, I still think project wise will have some advantages over box. Uh, but outside of that, for normal file management, I think Box can do just about everything that you would need it to do. Product-wise, has some more features and <coughs> nice to have to it, but so for your typical file, like you can use just Box. Like, does it, when you open a big file in Box, does it open the entire download, the entire thing, and open it, or does it? So it does like a kind of like a trickle download, download sync and stream. So it takes up. Uh, resources on your computer constantly in the background. And so if new files are updated, it will see those new files and start downloading it in the background with you without you having to do anything. So it will it will hog a bit of your bandwidth. Uh, but when you do open it, it will open right away. 
Well, that's actually, people, if we're like opening it just to view it, in, aren't we wanting to open it in GoodReader? <coughs> and uh, so syncing it with GoodReader, uh, similar to Dropbox, how you have GoodReader points, you could have GoodReader points to the box folder that you want and then tell it to sync. And then it's a batch download uh, caching, just like before. So is this is <coughs> for modeling? Are we sticking with project-wise? I think so. The files are so monstrous. Yeah, I don't so think project-wise, it's, it's like these solutions for BIM no. you know, and document control um, on the BIM side. You know, for like drawings and stuff, it's box. Right. So it's going over. So talking about you. Go ahead. The only problem with project-wise and box, the, the reason why we're sticking with project-wise is that the whole syncing issue of being able to download the latest files and maintaining, you know, the versioning mm -hmm. on, on models. Yeah. So that's the biggest sticking point on why we still have project-wise for BIM coordinates. Yeah. And then box is even? Not no, like CAD when you modify a, a layer inside of yeah. a drawing. Uh, project-wise will recognize that slight difference. Uh, yeah. At that level, it's only exchange information that you've changed gotcha. yeah. within and a file. So and you can literally have like a Navis version, like a Navis session open, and just hit refresh, and it will only bring in the new. Oh, okay. From the project, right? Yeah. The box doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, box for iPad. Um, this is <coughs> actually one of my favorite tools, even though I don't actually use the box app that much. Box mostly syncs with almost every app I can think of, GoodReader, File Browser, um, Quick Office Pro. Um, at any point in most applications I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I have access to my box files, either through the network connection or their GoodReader physically takes them and downloads them. Um, but you can do some cool things through them. Um, can I share something real quick? We were we over at UTI. We, we kind of started figuring out what some of the problems were over there, and <coughs> we didn't have our plan, the plans with us, and so we called over. Christina pulled them off the share drive, made us a collaborator box, I pulled them up my iPad, and we were flipping through the drawings in about 20 minutes. It was awesome. With Jack Patton. He was, he was digging it. <laughs> yeah. You like that? Yeah, they'll be here, you know, and there they were. So, anyway, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the last year, walk into yeah, more, exactly. um, more retrofits that way. <laughs> So you have the ability to open <laughs> open a box application in any installed application that box recognizes, like I said, file browser, go to meeting, uh, quick office. You can even open them in project wise if you have the app. Um, some of them are editors, some of them are for just viewing. If you open it in go to meeting, you're actually you can be running a webinar and be like, Oh, I have that file or that drawing, come into box, open it in go to meeting and it loads that drawing right into your webinar. Um, that's a way. You didn't tell me that yesterday, man. <laughs> you weren't using your iPad for your we webinar. Had a webinar going on. And <laughs> <laughs> um, the three dots on any file allow you to print. Um, again, you can print to any of our. I don't know if they're listed right now. They're not. They're, they're not coming up on mine. Okay. Um, I'll fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they will come up, up and you can print them. How that try and call it out? Um, <laughs> you don't need that printer to come up. I don't, the, I don't. The, the thing is, but I, so when you open a document out of, out, of, out of the box app, <laughs> it downloads every time you're opening it. It's not keeping it local. So if you're somewhere offline with your iPad, yeah. it won't open that file. Right? You can make it. But you can there. you can do it with the favorites, though, right? Uh, what I was, uh, favorites? Yeah. So that's what I was. I think so. so if you yeah. use that and you add the folder as a favorite, you can sync it and it keeps it local. It keeps it on it. Yep. Yeah. And every time, you know, if your pad is sitting there on, and it will sync up when it recognizes the change automatically. On file saved in your favorites, yeah. Yes. You can push it to GoodReader, it stays on GoodReader, and you don't have to have the interact. So. Right. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing with box open as the favorites. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's updated, then GoodReader won't have the current version. Right. You have to sync it. Thank you. <laughs> um, really all I have for the iPad app is pretty easy to use, generally speaking. Where do you get the icons um, for Microsoft? <laughs> the app? So, Box app. Is that on their website? Yeah, so when you log into your Box account. 
Thanks, guys. I got to get it. So when you're when you're logged in on the computer side, the cloud is soft application. I go through this probably once or twice a week because they change them all the time. Um, but the first ones they come up with are obviously Box for I iPads. They have Google Apps. Box for Office is the one that I was sharing with you guys for Excel and Word and, and all that kind of stuff, um, which you can also use the same shortcut of Box Sync, but that works with files that you, know, you, you either can't or don't have manually syncing your computer. Um, Box Edit is another great application. It allows you to actually edit box files from the web browser without actually leaving the web browser. So if you want to open up that RFI, edit it, you you click on it, you say edit, it brings up a list of programs just like whatever's installed on your computer. So PDF or I don't know if they have a Bluebeam plugin yet, but I'm sure they're working on it. And then uh, any of the Word or Excel or PowerPoint programs, you open it up in the web browser, you edit it, and then you make your changes, you save it. It actually locks the file for you when you go to edit it on the browser. So if somebody else goes in and looks at it either on Box Sync, on their computers, or if they try to open it from any other branch of Box, you'll see that it's locked by Mike Elmore, and you'll have to come to me and find out why it's locked. Um, that's a good one to keep to keep it in keep it in one place, so you're not bouncing from diff three different screens and trying to remember what you're doing. You're in the same window. When you save it, it saves it to Box. You're not having to migrate through a folder tree or anything like that. Um, they also go through multiple other companies that have done it. Fox FTP server, uh, web dev servers. The only reason I didn't bring up an FTP and web dev server is because IT, we in IT don't necessarily want you using Box like that. It's not the most efficient and effective way to do it. It's not as secure as we want Box to be. So whenever I'm linked to Box as a web dev and I have it saved in my folder tree as like a shared drive, it makes it it makes it less secure. It, it's the same thing as a shared drive where somebody could steal your computer and have access to your Box account. Web dev? Web dev. Web it's a shared drive. Okay. It looks exactly like a shared drive on your computer. Well. Basically, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> basically point your computer to the internet and makes it look like a shared drive. Yeah. Okay. And the problem with that, you try to explain, is that there's no login. That's why we're discouraging it. There are some instances, and I don't, no one here is from Kaiser Morris. Um, oh, what? No, Koshal really? is weird. He doesn't need to use it that way. Really? Oh, oh you are. Yeah. I forget. Well, you're on like three projects. <laughs> um, we had an IOR that needed access to Box, but they didn't want to set him up as a collaborator on Box. So they set him up. We gave him, he, he created his own Box account, and then they gave him a folder without being collaborators so that he could see what they're doing without actually editing or doing any files. So I believe he's just a, a viewer on that. And then he sees it through a web dev, so he didn't have to download Box Sync or do anything like that. It's less of DPR pushing on the person and more of a, you can do this just like you normally do. It's also for the security of Kaiser's computers, I think. They wouldn't allow... Some, some subcontractors and owners don't have the same freedoms with their computers that DPR does. So you can't download and install applications, you can't change them, you can't delete them, it's up to your IT administrator. Um, so that's a way to kind of get around that issue. If you're not allowed to sign up for those things based on your company's policies or whatever it is, web, um, setting it up like a shared drive like that is a way to skirt around the other person's IT. So any, any like, being a little after five, you got any, like, you got to know this kind of stuff about Box, or do we hit pretty much all the major? Say what? Seven things. Seven things. secret terms. Give us a download. What does everybody need to know to make this work? Box 
think first and foremost have it on your computers have it on all your computers use what, it what do you mean have it on your computer have it installed and running on your work computer on your home computer on anything you can have it running on so it was on the tree for the hard drive on one of your machines uh -huh. that saves as a favorites yep so that's that that's what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. That means have it on your computer. The one that says my box files is we use your phone at box sync. This is box sync. <coughs> box edit and box for office and box for outlook are not box sync. So where do you go to get box sync? Same place as you go to get the other applications. So you go to you go, you log into your box on your computer, right. click on apps, what, and so wait, box ah, sync right. takes your okay. <laughs> Okay. It's syncing what? From your computer to the cloud. Box, uh, to the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Vice versa. That's, not if you That's what I showed you day one. Yeah, but why, why, why don't you just hit that button on the side where all your... It, it's the same thing. Okay. That is it. Okay. Box sync can literally do everything, almost everything that <laughs> box on the browser can do. You can create new folders, you can lock them, I think you can even invite people, you can share links, you can secure files, you can do almost everything on BoxSync that you can do on the website, except you're on your computer, it's quicker, it's easier, it works better on our networks because all of our networks, at least in our offices and soon to be on our job sites, have priorities for Box to function quicker. And it's not reliant on having an internet connection at right. the point in time. Right. So if I create a folder on my box sync and I don't have the internet and I even invite collaborators or say I want to share it with this person, well, as soon as you're connected to the internet the next time, it uploads it to the web and shares with who it needs to share to. They have one for Mac too. That works pretty well. Pretty well? <laughs> <laughs> the same thing as the Windows um, Box sync, box, um, box for iPad, probably number two, or iPhone even. It gives you on-the-fly access to your files. So if you're away from your computer, if you're walking a job and you need a drawing set, you can have them in 20 minutes. You can have them, depending on the drawing set, in 10 minutes. Um, those two applications are probably the ones I use the most. The box. Um, to say, you know how to collaborate and share a folder. You know how to set what permissions so that I, you know, they can't accidentally delete the files. Uh, <laughs> That'd be the top uses. I mean, five and seven. Uh, if you got that down, you have a good ninety percent of it. So we recorded all of this. Yeah. Hopefully, it comes out well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fish eye lens. We'll see. It's, but it's high dust, so it should be alright. Yeah. Not like the one that fell over. That one is not working anymore, Mark. Thank you for that. We didn't get to it today, but we do have a couple uh, different examples of like a template uh, project folder uh, that we can like roll out. If you guys are passionate about it, but me or Mike or Mr. Craig know. Uh, so I see this as, as like engineers, it, and I might be making an assumption, but I'm thinking the engineers will gravitate to this more so than the other group. All right. Are we getting all of our engineers up to the some baseline level of using this so that they can force other people to use it by setting up their projects in this fashion? Okay, so I mean, Mike's just getting them your job for so that's, that's what I was about to say. I'm, what I do is... Right. So before you take it away, can you make sure my engineers... <laughs> right. <laughs> what, if you have a new job coming up, I right. and I've done my due diligence to figure out you have one coming up and when you're landing and all these things, I'll sit down with you for an hour before I know you're going to, or an hour before you're actually on site in your trailers, <laughs> and for that hour, sit down with you with an hour, and an hour before. Yeah. And I'll go over with you, here's <laughs> your folder structure, here's your tree, here's your collaborating, here's, okay. here's how you're going to use Box on your job site, and here's why I'm not going to give you a shared drive to do it. That's, that's cool. For that's pre, for pre con we've probably been using it for six to eight months for all of our invites, sending out uploading attachments. Yeah, I know. Renshaw loves it. So then at that point, it's just a handoff to the team. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in my grandma. There you go. <laughs> right now, it's a, it's a group of four, better hands. A group of four of us, <laughs> you or your PM that you work with who's not here, or FOC or engineer, that's kind of their deal. Like, have them get in contact with us. As flexible. long as it's logical? It's flexible and logical, yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of stuff you can do with it. Right. There's a couple sample structures that people you, are trying out. You said his name, I'm cool. What do you need structure? I do not know who it is. He has his like PSI. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Are you about vision? Like vision? Like vision? So one of the ideas that you, you got to think about, though, is we'll get the foremen that are running around with the iPad <coughs> going from job to job, if there's different file structures within each different project, then the foremen are going to be going, it's going to be a little more confusing for them, right? We talked about, we talked about yeah. kind of, well, that was one of the things they were hoping to get to today, was that the system would be able to work The one I just showed them, yeah, yeah. we're using that. Uh, you're using that? That's, that's where your I, kinda, I like that. Okay. Because it has everything from yeah, like starting. Now you want it to. I'm good after. Oh, it's well. Never mind, Marshall. We're over time. We won't break that. But it's, it has to be user friendly. Right, yeah. So, so if you one, in my mind, consistency. Like <laughs> we don't have a manual. So we're going to be consistent, though, right? <laughs> Between all of our jobs, it's going to be like so we don't have a manual. Like we just said we're mulling over which format we're going to be doing, right? So that means that we're leading down one path instead of multiple. We're choosing that.